<clears throat> let's see. Let's see what happens next. Uh, well, one of the uh, reason or one of the desirable characteristics is that you want high sensitivity. Well, if, if you don't have a highly sensitive system, in that case, you need lots of light. And uh, in high-speed photography, you can never have. It turns out you can never have enough light. Although you got to use it carefully. Uh, so uh, there's this device up there. You can use something like 3,200 watts of uh, light energy uh, coming out of it. And uh, you, this particular device is, is a commercial device. Uh, you can look right through this hole because you put the lens right in it. And you get ring light, essentially. Uh, it's called a palite. And it's fairly common in industry to get lots of light. So uh, one might ask, though, how much light do you need in order to make a properly exposed photograph. Now you say, well, I don't need to know that because I got my digital camera and I can make a picture and then see if it's any good and if it's not, then I open the lens or put more light on it. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that with film. But what if you had to take a picture someplace where you're not in control? Suppose you're sending a spacecraft to Mars and the camera has to make a properly exposed photograph and you got one shot at it. Well, in that case, you can't go around making a test. You have to make sure that there is the right amount of light uh, for the kind of speed that you have and the kind of exposure time that you're going to use. So all of this is, uh, is uh, connected or related to a, uh, a something that uh, used to be maybe more uh, understood in amateur photography circles. And that is something called the Sunny 16 rule. Anybody know what the Sunny 16 rule is? Anybody, did you hear it ever? You heard of it, okay. And it's because it's, particular, it's no longer really associated with digital. Uh, but essentially what it says is that if you use, if you use uh, a, a sensor, you know, I'll call it sensor film and, and digital same thing, sensors, that has a speed of 100. And you use an exposure time, which is the reciprocal of that. That would be 1 over 100. In that case, you can set your aperture to f16. And you'll get a properly exposed result. Okay, so that's the sunny 16 rule. That means if you're out there without a light, I don't know what light meters are. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, if you have to, to determine what exposure time to use for a, a film camera and you have no other guide, that will give you some way. Now, this is based on the fact that or, or this is for a sunny day. Okay? So it's based on the fact that on a sunny day, clear sunny day, there's a certain amount of light falling on the subject out there. Right here. Well, out there is problematic because we're in Rochester. Right? <laughs> Uh, but in a sunny day out in uh, New Mexico somewhere, uh, the amount of light that falls on a scene is predictable. And it turns out to be about 6,400 foot candles. Now, what's a foot candle? Well, it's a measure of incident light, how much light falls on a, on a scene. And light meters, whatever they are, allow you to measure it. And there are lots of them out there. People don't use them. On the other hand, uh, every camera has a light meter in it. Your cameras have light meter in it. So you could trans, uh, transform the aperture shutter speed suggestions of your camera and at the speed that you're using into a light meter if you wanted to. Uh, so here is the, uh, I think, here's the basis for it. So this is the Sunny 16 rule. And I mentioned the Sunny 16 rule saying, the ISO times the exposure time at f16 gives you a properly exposed result. So this, uh, and then the other thing that I told you that, that we know is that the amount of light that falls on a standard sunny day is 6,400 foot candles. Well, you can work those figures out and it, uh, or massage them around and determine how many foot candles or how many times the amount of light that falls on a average scene under sunlight is required 
for, for a particular exposure that you want to make. The equation is this one right here. So the foot candles are required. Which is trying to find, well, how much light am I supposed to put on the scene? It's 25 times the ISO squared. Uh oh. Uh, this is wrong. This should not be ISO, it should be the F number. It's 16 or something. So this, this should be F number. Divided by the exposure time times the ISO. So you can see what happens. Okay. Uh, if this is the reciprocal of this, then the denominator here goes to 1. Right? And the amount of foot candles is simply the F number squared times 25. So if uh, the F number that you choose is 16, you want to know what 16 squared is. Anybody know? I don't. Well, it'll be uh, 16 times 16. So it'll be 256. That's pretty cool. 256. That reminds me of other things. Right? Is, is, uh, is that an 8 bit something? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. 256. <laughs> pretty good. But, but now we take the 256 and multiply it times 25. And what does it come out to? 6,400. Okay, take my word for it. Okay, so it says that with the lens set to F16, an exposure time being the reciprocal of the ISO, we require the amount of light that a, a standard sunny day has. 6,400 foot candles. Now suppose you start to change things. It says, well, I don't want, <clears throat> I don't want uh, to use an exposure time which is the reciprocal of the ISO, I would use an exposure time which is half as big. Well, in that case, this will jump because exposure, this now is um, half of 1, so it will become 0.5. That means that this will double because you're dividing by half, right? So now you need 12,000 foot candles. That means twice the amount of light that sunlight would deliver to a standard scene. Pretty soon, when you start to think about exposure times such as a millionth of a second, you start to say, I need a hundred times or a thousand times the amount of light that falls on a scene illuminated by sunlight. And how am I going to get that? 